Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So uh, this week, Apple launched a new version of Logic, uh, which is, of course, its flagship DAW, um, version 10.5, uh, and it has a ton of new features, uh, most of which I don't care about at all because I'm not a Logic user. But one thing it does have that I'm very excited about is a new sampler plugin, which is billed as a successor to uh, Apple's famed EXS24 plugin. Uh, if you don't know, EXS uh, is a format that was developed by eMagic uh, in, yeah, I think the early aughts, maybe even the late 90s, uh, and it has persisted. Apple bought eMagic in 2003, and the format has persisted uh, pretty much unchanged for the better part of 20 years. Anyway, now in 2020, Apple has finally decided that sampling is something that's worth investing a little bit of time in, and it's reimagined what sampling is going to look like within Logic. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty excited to check it out. Uh, as I said, I'm not really a Logic user, but uh, yeah, being somebody who's super invested in the idea of sampling, um, yeah, pretty curious. I haven't even opened it up yet, so I figured I'd bring you all along for the ride. Last week, of course, I released a box violin um, sample library. Uh, my plan for this video is to try to create that same sample library within Logic, within this new plugin. So um, yeah, let's dive in. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so yeah, this is the first thing I wanted to mention. There are apparently two sampler plugins. There's one called Quick Sampler, which is for like, if you just have one uh, audio file, uh, it's basically uh, akin to Ableton's Simpler. Uh, and then there's Sampler, which is the multi-sample player. And here it is. Definitely an upgrade over EXS's uh, old interface. Uh, I should get rid of this. Uh, and okay. And when you start it up, it plays like I think a sine wave or something like that. So that's exactly like EXS used to do. Uh, okay, so there are different sections, a synth section. Okay, and this controls which sections are showing. This mod matrix, I have to say that, Definitely reminds me a lot of EXS um, with this source via target thing. I never could wrap my head around that. Um, okay, let's uh, let's try to pull in some samples. Uh, as I said, I'm going to be creating um, a, a logic version of my uh, box violin sample. So go to the SFZ version, which has naked wave files. And I'm going to do the box violin swells first. So I'm just going to drag these all in. It's, that's what it's saying to do, I think. So is there any kind of auto mapping? Auto map. Okay. Auto map using current root note. No. Map using pitch detection. Ooh, that's fancy. Pitch detection. Uh, let's see what happens if I do that. A huge differentiator between um, a sampler that's like usable and a sampler that's great is uh, how well it can do auto mapping um, just because it's such a, a savings of time. Okay, this looks pretty good. That looks exactly right, in fact. Okay, so I'm going to make some changes here just because uh, I know how I want my samples uh, laid out and I know that I don't want any of these violin samples to be pitch bent up. I always want them to be pitch bent down. Um, pitch bending violins up uh, just for some reason never sounds really good to me. So I'm just gonna drag these down like this. Okay. I'm pretty excited about this. And it looks like it even uh, figured out uh, good breakpoints for the velocities, which is it's, it's pretty, pretty fancy. So it's nice. You can, you can edit multiple samples at the same time. That feels very natural. So far, this is very intuitive. Okay, I'll try to play a chord. It's working pretty well already. Uh, really, the only thing I need to do at this point is to set the envelope. And I think I, think I set it to 3000 on the contact version. Pretty good. That pitch detection thing is pretty killer though. I mean, being able to actually just drop a bunch of samples in and have it figure out what pitch you're talking about. Like, why does every sampler not have that? I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, okay, so uh, what's my next test on this? Uh, I guess I want to uh, try to save this and uh, yeah, see what comes out. Save with audio data, there's a little checkbox. Okay, let's see what it just threw onto my desktop. Okay, an EXS file. Okay, so this is really an, a reskinning of EXS. It's not as though uh, we're suddenly 
uh, faced with a completely and yeah, these are just the wave files. Okay, um, pretty straightforward. Okay, I guess that's it. Uh, I was expecting this to be kind of a, like a longer video and that I would uh, have more struggles with this piece of software, but uh, I guess uh, credit to the uh, team at Apple who put this together, it's actually really, really self-explanatory. Obviously, uh, a sampler like uh, the one bundled now with Logic and the one that's in Ableton, about which I'm also making a video, by the way. These samplers are more workhorse samplers. They have a different set of features than something like Contact. Contact, uh, generally, you make a contact instrument because you're hoping to share it with other people. Uh, you can make a pretty UI. EXS is obviously not like that. It's uh, something for composers and producers who are trying to make samples for their own use. Still, uh, yeah, what did that take me? Three minutes, four minutes? Really, it was pretty quick to assemble uh, an EXS sample. Okay, that's it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video uh, and you want to see more like it, make sure you hit subscribe, uh, super important. I'm going to put a link to the sampler instruments I created uh, in the description to this video. Um, yeah, see you next time.